Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Cook That Book. Uh, today I'm going to share a recipe with you. My name is Joan DiFrancesco. I am the World Pizza Champion 2014. Today's recipe is actually not in my book or not in this book, but this recipe today is especially for you. I'm going to teach you how to make the world's best pizza. I'm going to be making some pizza dough, then I'm going to make some pizza for you. Okay, to make the world's best pizza, it's really, really essential that you do measure all your ingredients. So we don't just throw everything into a bowl and we just mix away when we're making pizza dough, right? So the first step is, let's measure our salt. Now this recipe is really simple. It's one kilo of flour, 30 grams of salt, 600 mils of water, and only one gram of yeast. So measuring off the salt. We have ourselves 30 grams of salt. Now we place that straight into the bowl. The first two ingredients that we start off with when we're making pizza dough is water and salt, okay? So really important is to start off with the water and the salt. And all we do is dissolve. Now you can use, um, you know, uh, a mixer if you like. I love making pizza dough by hand, especially with this uh, quantity, it's quite simple. So if you don't have a mixer, really easy. Now at this stage, what we're gonna do, we have some yeast and we also have some flour, right? Now this is double zero flour, directly from Italy. As you can see, it's my flour. Well, it's actually not my flour, but I'm the ambassador of this uh, flour company. And what we're going to do is, before we add the yeast into the bowl, is we're gonna add a little bit of flour. Now the reason why we do this is to separate the salt and the yeast, because if we put those two ingredients together, you will kill the yeast. So we're gonna add about 20% into the bowl and we're gonna mix away, just making up like a, a crepe mix or like a pancake sort of texture. So once we've done this, what we're going to do is add the yeast directly into the bowl. So we don't need to dissolve the yeast in water or put it under a salamander out in the sun or anything like that, okay? We don't need to do any of that really simple. We're gonna drop it straight into the mixture and it will dissolve on its own. So really, really easy. At this stage, what we're gonna do is add a little bit more flour. And we're gonna continue doing this until everything is combined. So we've got, as we call in Italian, punto di pasta. We wanna to get to the point of the dough. Okay, so as you can see, the dough has now combined. And what I'm gonna do is turn it over onto the bench. This just makes the mixing um, process a little bit easier. So we're gonna flour in front of the um, pizza dough. Don't ever throw flour on top, because what we wanna do is mix into the flour rather than having the flour already on the dough. So I'm gonna mix for a couple of minutes, because the dough's nearly ready. This process shouldn't take you any longer than 15 or so minutes. Um, so it's quite a quick process. The longest part is when you have to allow the dough to rest. But this part here, really good workout. You don't need to go to the gym after this, trust me. Right? And, okay, perfect. So, once you have your dough combined, and as we said, punto di pasta, what we do is we press down into the center. If it pops up really fast, that means your dough is ready to put aside to rest. The other way you can test whether your dough is correctly is you can use a thermometer. So you just put a thermometer into your dough. If it's anywhere between 23 and 26 degrees, your dough is ready to put aside to rest. So what I'll do at this point is place it back into the bowl that I started off with, and I will cover this with a cloth. Okay, so I've allowed my dough to rise now for about two hours. And what we do then is we come back to it and we cut it into dough portions. Now, this recipe will probably get you around eight to 10 pieces, just depending on the size that you make your dough balls, okay? So what we wanna do is lightly flour um, the dough, very, very small amount. And we are going to cut them into pieces. Now. I'm gonna cut them into pretty much probably like a small um, size pizza. But what I like also doing is I like leaving a little bit of extra dough aside because I like making a bit of bread with the dough as well because it's really good to make bread with. Or my famous Nutella calzone, but that's a recipe for another day. 
Okay, so making pizza dough balls, really simple. There's, there are a couple of different ways, okay? So first one, you can roll it on the bench. Um, this is a really, um, a technique that is used quite frequently by bakers. Um, another uh, technique is one that I've been using since I was a kid, and that is one hand guides, the other folds. As you can see, I'm folding the dough in, and then I place my hand like I have an ice cream cone in my hand, and I rub together. There's another dough piece. Another, um, another technique, and this is a really old technique, and that is bringing the dough up between your thumb and your finger, and we make a dough ball. Now, you've probably seen that done before with buffalo mozzarella, okay? So that's where that technique comes from. But for those of you that have never ever made a dough ball and find that those three uh, techniques are probably a little bit too difficult, I'm gonna teach you a really simple way that you can do right away at home. And that is, we place a dough piece right in front of us and we take the part that is closest to the body and we fold away, right? Really simple, folding right over so we cover the rest of the dough. We then pick up the folded part that faces the um, ceiling, part closest to the body again, we pick up and we fold away. Now we repeat this probably about four or five times. Just keep folding away and rolling on the bench like that. Then what we do is, once we have that shape with our thumb and our fingers, we press down, we lift up, tuck under, and just turn it over like you have a dumpling in your hand and just crimp the bottom and we have a dough piece. So that's how we make dough balls. So now we're gonna go into making the exciting part. We're gonna make some pizzas, so stay tuned. Okay, so this is my favorite bit. I've waited for this dough to rise for more than 24 hours. So what I wanna do is I wanna respect it with everything that I have. And what I mean by that is let's not use a rolling pin when we're opening up our pizza dough, okay? We're gonna use our hands. I'm gonna um, demonstrate a technique that we use to open up uh, pizza than Palton way. So we start an inch in from the bottom and we work our way to an inch from the top. Now, really simple, we press down and we stop. Now, what am I doing is that I'm pushing all the gases that this dough has created over the, those 24 hours and that's really important. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Repeat again, pushing down. Now, how do I get it open onto this board so I can make my pizza? This is the next technique. We place our hand one inch in. With our other hand, we crimp, we stretch over to our forearm and we go back down. Again, slow, stretch over to the forearm and back down. Now, when you become really good at doing this, this is the technique. <laughs> so. That was just me teasing you a little bit. But it does take a little bit of practice, but you can do it, okay? It's really important because those gases, I can't stress how important they are. Okay, so we're going to make my famous margarita. So I'm gonna use some tomato on the base. And I'm going to put one of my favorite cheeses, buffalo mozzarella. like that and I am going to also place a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over the top now what I'm not going to do right now that I normally do is I put basil when uh, before I place my pizza in the oven but because we're cooking in a conventional oven we want to put the basil when you take the pizza out of the oven because you will burn the basil, it'll become like really brown. You don't want to do that. You want to have the basil really fresh, right? If you've got a wood fire oven at home, put the basil before it goes on um, the pizza and then place it in the oven. Okay, guys, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to put this pizza in the oven on the pizza stone. Really simple, right? Use the board. Don't put too much flour on the bottom of the um, board because we don't want to burn the flour, okay? So we're going to place the pizza where the board is and just gently slide right off. That's it. Close the oven. And we're going to wait for this to cook. Okay, so my pizza's nearly ready now. I'm going to put on these beautiful oven gloves. I love oven gloves. And I'm going to take the stone out of the oven. So, 
I want you to really take note, this stone, the beauty about it is that it's 100% glazed, so it, not only will it last longer, but it will also cook your pizza so much better. Now, I've had this in the oven for about five minutes, probably not even, and it's already done. It's ready, ready to uh, be cut up, so I'm gonna take it off the stone now. Just like that, it slides off really easy. And I'm going to get my pizza cutter and I'm just gonna cut right through it. Now you're gonna hear that beautiful crunch. Quite hot, really cut. You can see those beautiful cell structures in the oven, uh, in, the, in the pizza that's been cooked. So it's cooked through really nicely. And then I'm gonna grab, this is one of my favorite tools of the day. I love this little thing. I am going to take a nice bike ride over my pizza. There we go. Voila. Now I'm going to top with again one of my favorites, fresh basil. Grab my pizza. Now how do we eat Neapolitan pizza? We always have to fold the pizza in two. That's the best way to eat it. So here we go. Homemade, beautiful flavor. Dough has been made perfectly. Oven stone has cooked this pizza to perfection. Hope you enjoyed my uh, pizza recipe. We'll see you soon.